Hi, and welcome back to Power Electronics. This is week two, and I'd like to introduce the next four video segments that we're going to be using for the uh, second and third day of, of the class for this week. And uh, I'll start with this video. In this video, we, we cover power switching at a very high level. And hence, I like that, that term that I've got the alternate the title, looking for power switching from a 3,000 foot view. And we're gonna, we're gonna look for what's that perfect switch. In the second video, we start at a very simple and basic level and we look at a, a, a BJT switch that we can use for either high power control or in the example I'm gonna show, we can use to uh, do logic level shifting where sometimes we have a 3.3 volt logic and we need to actually have maybe a 24 or even higher volt logic for controlling a device. In the third video, we're gonna look at the preliminary design of a DC motor drive using what's called a DC chopper circuit. And for that, we're gonna utilize a MOSFET. And finally, in the fourth video, I want to introduce uh, what's called an H-bridge. In an H-bridge, we're gonna combine both a high side and low side switching pairs. And H-bridges have become very popular. They're used for, for doing the, the DC to AC conversion or building our AC inverters. So let's get started with uh, this topic. Let's go over an outline of this video segment, this specific one. And there's three main topics I, 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 I want us to cover in this one. The first one is we're going to look at the, the, the difference between high side and low side switching. And after that, then we're going to look at commonly used transistors for doing power switching. And finally, I want to look at some of the things that we would like to see in our ideal uh, perfect switch and, and the design considerations when you start selecting switch for power for power applications. So the first thing we can look at is on a high side switch and let's let's bring our switch up here. And one of the things we notice right away on the switch, on the high side switch, we are connecting our load. Let me get a color here. We're connecting our load to our power supply. And that's uh, that, that's fine because when, when the switch is open, no current's flowing through our load, the voltage across our load is zero, and it's, it's safe. Our, our, our load is reference to our potential. So safety is a big reason for sometimes for doing high side switching. Uh, we can go in and touch it. For example, you, the, your, your home lighting, the switches on your home lighting are all high side switch. We switch the power to the light. There is a downside though to high side switching. So when we close the switch on a high side, we're usually using some form of microcontroller or power or, or, or smaller voltage electronics to control that switch, a low voltage electronic. So let me throw an electronic control in there. When we close that switch, the one thing you'll notice is that switch is now referenced to our high side voltage, which could be on the order of hundreds, perhaps even thousands of volts. Yet, we're using electronic control that sometimes is on the order of 3.3 volts or 5.0 volts, and often, more often than not, is reference to our ground potential. So with the switch closed, our switch is much higher in voltage. Let's contrast that with low side switching. In low side switching, we now have the load connected to our power side, but we switch the ground side or the reference side, if you will. So here we've got our ground switched. The downside to this one is even though the switch is open, no currents flowing, the voltage across our load or our load is at a potential voltage that is at a higher voltage that may be safe to work on or safe to touch. Typically not an issue for DC motors. So, so things like that. There are some applications where that's not a problem. Now, when we close the switch, it's now referenced to ground. And I'm going to put some electronic controls in here. And our electronic controls, again, are only probably 3.3 or 5, 5 volts referenced above our ground potential. Um, and so this... This voltage here, and I'm going to put V sub C for our control, it's, it's, it's typically safe and easier to control with, with low side switching. So we had the high side switching, and then we had the low side switching. High side switching, we connect 
uh, the we connect the power source to our load, and in low side switching, we connect the ground uh, to the load, if you will, or the return path to the load. Now I want us to look at commonly used transistors for power electronics or or power switches, and we're going to look at three different three different. Uh, transistors for power switches. The first one we're going to look at, and very briefly in this course, we're not going to put a lot of attention on this, but it's still commonly used, is the bipolar junction transistor, or the BJT. The BJT you probably is the first transistor you learned, and there are two different types. There's the NPN and there's the PNP, and the takeaway from, from this is it's a current control device. So if we look at, here's the symbol, there is our collector, uh, we have our base, and we have the emitter. Uh, down here and our our, our emitter uh, always has the arrow uh, on the symbol whether or not it's the uh, NPN and the PNP and it shows the direction of current flow through the device um, as a switch and I'm just going to show e sub, uh, I sub C it is a con current control device and the, the current through the collector is equal to beta times the current into the base. So if we put a small amount of current in the base, we can get a lot, a larger amount of current coming from the collector through. Uh, and that's, that's the bipolar junction transistor. The next one we'll look at is the metal oxide semiconductor field effect trans transistor or MOSFET. Again, two different types, the N channel and the P channel. Still a three terminal device. Actually, it's sometimes a four terminal device, but, but let's just look at these. We have at the top, that's called our drain. We have our gate, and then we have our source. And the takeaway on this one is MOSFETs are voltage control devices. So when we put on an end channel, I have an end channel shown here, the way to tell is look at the arrow on, that's called, this is actually called the body, the body node. If the arrow is pointing in, that uh, I, I kind of use this, the, the idea that that means in order to turn this on, I need a higher potential at the gate relative to the source. So our gate to source, when it's at a positive potential, when the, when the gate is above the source and potential, it'll turn on. Uh, the P channel will have the arrow, that arrow flipped. But when we have that and we turn that on, we can get a current, we open up the channel and we can get a current, uh, the drain current to flow uh, through the device. Uh, it doesn't, well, actually went through through the, the, the what's called, the, that's called the body diode, but it'll flow through the device uh, when we turn it on. You often get the body diode as part and parcel. Uh, you don't necessarily have the option to, to, to not have it. It's part of the manufacturing process that that body diode's there. Some people use it to their advantage. Uh, sometimes you add an additional diode if you need one. And finally, uh, we're not going to go into too much detail on this one. This is the insulated gate bipolar transistor, the IGBT. Takeaway on this one, it is a voltage control device. Uh, very popular device as well, typically for higher voltage. It's, it's somewhat the best of both worlds. It's kind of, if you look at how it's manufactured or, or the, the topology of it, it is a blend between a, a PNP junction transistor and a MOSFET, and it, uh, it, it has that, that oxide gate on it, so um, we can control it this way. This is still called the gate, this is called the collector, and this is called the emitter. So again, uh, a, a very popular device. So the three, three different commonly used power devices, BJTs, MOSFETs, and IGBTs. Now, I want to talk about what are the design considerations for an, our, our switch. In the ideal world, we would have an infinitely fast switch, so our switching speed would not be an issue. Um, we would have, uh, uh, it would be rugged, so we could apply any voltage across the switch, any current through the switch. It would have zero resistance, so there would be no power loss, and it would be very low cost perhaps even free. Well, it's not going to be free. So, but the first thing we want to talk about in, in when you start looking at what switch do I want is switching speed. So for example, on the switches, we are often going from one region, uh, operational region in the transistor to another. And I'm just going to draw a generic uh, transistor curve. Uh, let me just select a, a BJT for now. And so for example, this might be the collector current 
and this might be the collector to emitter voltage. And we get these different curves. Uh, that's for I sub B equal to zero. And then we get these different curves for different values of the base current. And what we want, where we're always doing is we are looking at where our current, our current through dev the device is zero, which means the, the voltage is all across our switch. And that's the, the switch open. And we then go to some location where the switch is closed. And we have to traverse up into that, that location. For the uh, BJT, that's called, uh, this is called the saturation region uh, for the BJT. And we can't get there infinitely fast. It takes some time. And as we're going through this transition, the voltage is going towards zero while the current starts at zero and starts going up. And so we're going to have some type of loss in the device. Obviously, reliability, there's different voltage ratings on these devices, different current ratings to the devices. That's, you know, the, uh, we want to look at that. How reliable is the switch? What are the voltage ratings and current ratings? What is the loss? Obviously, I would love to be here for the loss because now my voltage is completely zero regardless of my current, but, but that's never the case. We're usually on one of these lines. There is going to be some small voltage drop across the device when we are in conduct conducting, but ideally we would like that as small as possible. And again, cost. Now, I'd like to bring up a graph here that, that I, I found this and I, I stole this from an application note called how wide, wide band gap technologies stack up. Wide band gap uh, is, is the latest and greatest. And when we look here, this is, this is a wide band gap device. It's called uh, psyllium carbide MOSFET. And the other one is gallium nitride uh, field effect transistor or GANFET. Those two are the uh, where where some of the, the the applications are pushing us to. They're very fast, very fast switching frequencies, and uh, the power dissipation is is really good on them. Um, here's kind of the space. Here you can see where the the BJT space is. Here's our MOSFET space right through here, and then we have our IGBT space up here. Thyristors are in there. I'm not going to cover those. Those are uh, more AC device, but boy, um, look at look at how much power capability they can handle. So this, uh, this nice graph, it just kind of gives you an overview where those different technologies fit in. Uh, and uh, if further reading, if you really want to go on here, the, the futures on these wide ba band gap devices, I did post a link on the Blackboard page if you want to do some further reading. So Key, key points from this, this video segment, uh, we looked at the difference between high side switching and low side switching. Then we looked at what are the three common transistors, at least what we're going to cover in this class, that's the uh, BJT, MOSFET, and IGBT. But there is also the wide band gap devices if you want to go off and, con and do some more research. And then finally, what are some of the key design considerations when you start selecting a device? You want to know what is the speed for your application? What is your budget going to be? How reliable are the devices? For example, what are your voltage ratings, current ratings? And then what's, what, what efficiency do you need on your application? So uh, that's this video. The next video segment in this sequence is going to be on, uh, we're going to look at uh, a simple BJT type switch for doing just power control, simple power control or logic level shifting. Thanks for watching.